Where are you guys from? India. 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 Everybody here from India? Yeah, India. Where do you guys want to go in the United States? What city? California. California? Yes. California? Everybody here California? New Jersey. New, York. New Jersey. Seattle. Seattle. New, York. New York. You want to work? Yeah. yeah. You want a job? No, no. Yes, yes. No. No, what? No. Yeah. You don't want to work? No. Why'd you life in danger? Life in danger. Okay. So you're here to seek asylum. One day crossings at our southern border were what about 1500 daily? But on Monday, they jumped by almost a factor of 10 to nearly 13,000. So what's the real reason for this massive and sudden surge? Well, Customs and Border Patrol is telling our own Bill Malusian that smugglers are purposely overwhelming the border in an effort to guarantee mass releases of humanity all at once. For instance, in the Del Rio sector alone, migrants from 28 countries have been encountered at the border. Most of them don't speak a, almost a word of English. Among those are folks from a tiny African country using a loophole to gain entry into the country. These are the citizens of Senegal, and they're getting here via pseudo-legitimate travel agencies that are advertising visa-free travel to the U.S., where they're then connected with human smugglers at the border. Joining me now from Eagle Path, Texas, is Alden Cabello. He's an independent journalist who's been covering the crisis from both sides of the border. Alden, what are your sources telling you tonight? Well, there are several things, Laura. One is, uh, to Bill Malusian's point, I've been to Tapachula, and there in Tapachula, they actually have uh, psychologists that are training and coaching these migrants on what to say and what not to say. As you can see in Bill's uh, video, initially they speak English, and all of a sudden they, they forget English. Um, and that's exactly what I saw in Tapachula, that these migrants are being trained and coached on what to say. The only difference is that now here in Piedras Negras, when I'm with them on the, on the Mexican side and they're about to cross, they, they talk freely and they're, they're telling me they're coming here because they're seeking a better life, better opportunities, better education for their kids. Um, and not necessarily because they're fleeing uh, any other requirements necessary to seek asylum. Well, they, they know what to say to qualify for asylum. This is all, you know, this is all a game. You know, like I, my life in danger. I mean, they're just going to say that because they know that'll maybe help their asylum claims. But my sources in El Salvador, Alden, are telling me that these are mostly men from certain African countries are actually flying by the thousands into Central America, places like Nicaragua, and then they're working their way up here, but they're flying into Central America to come into the United States. That's exactly right. They're actually uh, pseudo uh, travel agencies that are courting these migrants to fly, especially into uh, Nicaragua. And then from there, they're taking all Central, uh, Central America and ending up in Tapachula. And what happens in Tapachula, Chiapas, is that from there, depending on the resources, they get filtered to different border towns. For example, what we're seeing here in Piedra Negras is mainly Venezuelans who are uh, the poorest of the poor, and that's why they're arriving on the freight trains. Um, and then what you see in Lukeville, Arizona, or California, is those that, that can afford paying a smuggler $10,000 and up. And um, these numbers are pretty much the same, uh, what we're seeing here in, in Eagle Pass and, and also in Arizona. So the, the major uh, hub, Travesty. which is Tapachula, is once again filling up because uh, immigration offices are completely shut down until after January 6th when they open up, then you're gonna, we're going to see another wave coming of those that are stuck right now in Tapachula, uh, and we'll see them here at the border not pretty a soon. Yeah, well, I mean, it's not a country. I mean, our, uh, we cease to be a country when we cease to control our borders. But you talk about something called the selfie effect that's happening after they cross. What, what is that? So that's exactly right. Uh, as soon as the migrants cross from Piedra Negras into Eagle Pass, I, I usually take video of them. And the first thing they do as soon as they cross is they take a selfie, they get on the phone, call their relatives and saying, I'm in the U.S. And that's the messaging that's getting back to their relatives and other migrants saying they're made it, they made it in, let's go. Uh, they're not so listening to politicians yeah, so here in on. the U.S. They're, they're listening to, exactly, they're listening to, to their own messaging. Auden, thank you for being there and reporting on this. This is a calamity of national security, economic proportions, and of course, 
it's a horrible humanitarian issue as well. Out and thank you.